everyone welcome to the saturday live stream got a lot of things to cover so let's just uh, jump right in so just like the thumbnail and title suggests uh, the eu looks like there's putting some uh, restrictions not an outright ban but you're gonna we're gonna go over this and uh, talk about it before it gets uh, major coverage for you to realize just how laughable this actually is so what we have today is a little piece talks about the eu is cracking down on cash and crypto payments which you know that's a pretty good idea. Uh, if you're a government and you say, you know what we should do to, to deal with all these uh, uh, people who are doing the Ill illegal activities, let's make sure that uh, the people that are legally doing it uh, are stifled and they can't do it, which means that the illegal people won't do it. Uh, it sounds like a great plan. So here's what we got. New regulations, which were greenlit by the majority of the EU Parliament's lead commissions on March 19th establish specific limitations on cash transactions. So we're gonna start with the cash transactions. So we'll get into the crypto in a second, but I, I still have to tell you this is ridiculous. So they're gonna limit you moving cash. Cash payments exceeding 10,000 euros will be prohibited. Full stop, that's it. Cash payments exceeding 10,000 will be prohibited. Now I'm sure they make provisions for different institutions, companies, corporations and stuff like that. I think this is probably more for the individual person because, you know, who's going to spend over 10,000 euros in a, in a single spot? It makes no sense, right? Again, that's sarcasm. Anonymous cash transactions above 3,000 will also, will also be outlawed. Wow, that's crazy. So you have those two things. I'm sure there's uh, some provisions in there, but that's not the whole point of this. The whole point is this. Crypto payments are the most contentious aspect of the new AML anti-money laundering package. Under the new laws, any crypto payments made using unidentified self-custody wallets will become illegal. So that could be any kind of wallet that you that you have. That could be uh, the MetaMask. That could be Phantom Wallet. That could be SoulFlare. That could be whatever else that, that, that's out there that is not identified. Now, I think there may be a provision here where you can say, okay, this is my MetaMask wallet. This is what I have. You tie this to me so everybody knows. Again, we're going to see how ridiculous that is. This applies to any digital wallet, be it mobile, desktop, or browser-based, not operated by a licensed provider or like a centralized exchange. New AML regulations are slated to begin within three years of their official entry into force. However, the anticipation that these laws will be fully operational well before the standard enforcement timeline. So before this kind of breaks out, because of course the mainstream media or whoever else is gonna pick this story up, they're gonna say, okay, now we've got a new FUD story. Now we're gonna run with it. And of course, people who are anti-Bitcoin and crypto and digital assets are gonna say, okay, see, we told you, this is all gonna go down in flames. However, this is ridiculous. Anonymous transactions, this is a, this is a quote from Breyer. Anonymous transactions are a fundamental human right for achieving individual financial autonomy, infringements on privacy rights. And then uh, coming down here, the regulation on self-custody. Wow. The regulations on self-custody wallets could be technologically bypassed by using DEXs, decentralized exchanges, or privacy-focused blockchains. So again, when they talk about this, what's to stop? I'm going to ask you a question. Maybe I'm not understanding this. What we're talking about here is if you want to do 10,000 in transactions on crypto, why wouldn't you just do like have a couple of different wallets out there and just say, okay, well, if you if the payment is this much, I've done this before actually, and not not to get around different things. It's because there was there was the limitations that were set. If you need a payment, okay, and it's $20,000, why wouldn't you just use like one, two, or three different wallets and kind of go from there, which would be the same thing. And then off you go. So for me, when I take a look at this, I'm like, what are they doing? And as far as like cash payments, it'd be the same thing. Like cash payments, if you want to hide things, uh, first of all, crypto is not a great place to do that. If you want to hide things, there are, it's an open ledger. Anybody can take a look at it. There's all different types of scanners. Bitcoin, Ethereum, every blockchain is available for people to take a look at it. So when we take a look at this and we think to ourselves, okay, this is going to be bad. There's just no way of why this would happen. So anyhow, 
we'll see where this all goes. And I think uh, the last thing I would say here is that someone said in the in the comments, this is just a provision. This hasn't gone. Well, it was greenlit by the majority of the EU parliaments on March 19th. So I know they've been talking about this, but apparently this is going to go into effect. Now, if something changes, I'll let everybody know, but that's the information that we have. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Again, if they want to just break up the transactions, it's easy for that. And if they want to do, if anybody wanted to use like a VPN, because I seriously believe, I honestly believe that autonomous transactions are, are right. And we shouldn't have to tell everybody what we buy and what we do. And if people say, well, I have nothing to hide, that's not the point. The point is everybody should have that opportunity to purchase and transact in an autonomous way without somebody peeping into you and watching every single one of your transactions. And that's, of course, what government is pretty much bad, good to do. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And that's the negative news. Let's talk about some good stuff for a second. Huh? This was a, I just was snooping around on Ben's site in the Cryptoverse, and there was this great thing called the fair value logarithmic regression. Now, there's gonna be tons of uh, price predictions, I'm not big in that, but I found it interesting. This is just a fair value. And it goes all the way back to 2011. And this is like the most conservative of conservative. And when we take a look at it, of course, like when we're in the bear markets, going back to 2010, right? Bear market, it wasn't even a halving yet. The fair market value for the upper bound, this is crazy, in 2011 was four bucks. The middle value was $3 and the lower bound was $3.08, but it actually went up to $20. Then of course, we go into bear markets and it dips way below that, right? And then we start to go into 2013, same thing happened. But it's just insane to think about that the fair value of the upper bound is $168 here in December, 2013. The fair market value, just where it should be, is 141 and lower bound is 119, yet reach $1,000. Now let's come over here to 2017. The upper bound should have only been $4,790, the lower 3,000. But we of course went all the way up to 19,000. Doesn't show it, but it did. And even, even 2019, and this is when we had a little bit of a rally and there was really not too much going on. The upper bound was 12,000. Bitcoin price was 11,200. So it actually went above it. Actually, if we, we zoom in, we can see that it actually went above the upper bound. And that was not even in a bull run. Same thing happened again in 2021. The fair market value should have been in the upper part, 29,000, but it hit 60. And now here we are coming into this nice bull run. And we're at the lower bound of 67,000. Not bad, quite honestly. Fair market value, 82,000. The upper bound is 100,000. Man, when that hits, I unfortunately have to take a dip into the pool. But I just was curious to see if we extrapolate this out and just go to like the end of 2024, where could we be? And again, we may go into another bear market. Who knows? No, it's anybody's guess. But look at this. And again, think about to the last bull markets. The upper bound was is is 135,000, fair market value 110, the lower bound 90,000. But even if we go to the lower bound of 90,000, would anybody be like upset at that point if we were that that low? I think that's it's, it's just something to think about. Um it doesn't mean that uh, everything should go up or can go up to that point. It's just interesting to take a look at the fair market value of where we could be and where we should be. Anyhow, let me know what your predictions are. Mine still remains the same. Bitcoin will be between $5 and $500,000 by the end of 2024. And I've always nailed that. But that's all we have for that. But remember, this is Bitcoin. There is other opportunities out there if you're so bold to take those opportunities. And a couple of things that I've been taking a look at, there's a great narrative. I mean, we, we know about the narratives that are out there. Web threes, DEXs, which we just kind of talked about. Another big narrative is DPIN, Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Network, and another one is Artificial Intelligence. What if you combine the both? Well, there was a node sale on a new project called Aether, and uh, I couldn't get into it. I'm 
I'm in the United States because Gary is protecting me harder, but uh, they raised over $100 million for these node sales. And I actually had uh, Dan Wang on. He's one of the co-founders of Aether. And we did a deep dive video, which will be on the second channel over at Dan DGEM, but it looks like a good project because they already have a massive amount of GPUs that are in a decentralized physical infrastructure network, and it's going to be powering AI. And I think it's interesting about where it is. Now, this token doesn't launch until May of 2024. So right now, we'll be covering this, not on this channel so much, but on the secondary channel. But again, they sold, <laughs> the narrative is huge. They sold 26,000 in ETH. Let me see some, 25,000 was a couple of days before. And there was, yeah, $10 million in node sales. And that was just on the first, oh no, excuse me. Ubi, Ubi Capital came in and just them alone, $10 million in nodes. So we'll see where this goes, but I gotta tell you, I think this is gonna be pretty good. And then there's another one on this one. And what I, what I like about this one is of course what we just talked about, but this one is based on uh, Arbitrum, which is a layer two for Ethereum. Now you take that and flip it over. There's another one called io.net. And this one is powered by Solana and it has partners with uh, Filecoin and Render already. And when I took a look at this one as well, I'll be doing a deep dive on this. They just put this out 20 hours ago. IONet's recent expansion to facilitate Apple hardware will allow users to start earning by providing computing power from devices within with M1, M2, M3 chips, which is what I have on my MacBook Pro. This will allow more users to onboard the IONet platform with engineers now being able to do whatever they do. So again, uh, this one will be launching relatively soon. We'll keep everybody up to date. But if you just want to go into Bitcoin, it's a pretty good play. But there are opportunities out there and we'll go from there. But this one looks pretty good. And if you're wondering about like the deep in play and AI, we did a pretty uh, extensive video on those two factors over on the second channel, Dan DGen. Again, some more risky stuff. I linked this in the description where we talked about Minutes Network, which is a telecom play but also with D-PIN and how that works and why it's going to be so, I think, massive coming up into late 2024, 2025, and we'll go from there. So check those out, links in the description. And finally, I wanna give a shout out to this young kid. He came on to X and he talks about him getting drained. And it was a great video and it's a great lesson. I feel sorry for him because first of all, he got drained, which happens to the best of us. I mean, there's scams out there like crazy. But just the amount of poise that he had as everybody piled on and pretty much called him a moron and an idiot, which is the worst part of our community. Let's be honest. X is not the place for loving compassion. It's a place to come over and really just get destroyed unless you just want to do memes all day. So I want you to listen to this and learn from this kid. It's a minute and 40 seconds. I linked the description of his uh, X account in the in the uh, description so you can give him a follow. But uh just take a listen to this. Let me make sure you can hear this correctly. I want to make sure it's crystal clear what he's saying. Let's see. Yeah, take a listen. Hey, guys, I'm going to try to keep this short. My name's Ford. Um, I had my D got drained today. Um, I'm 14 years old. I live in the United States. Um, I hope you guys can understand that I'm not here to ask for money. I'm done. Don't send me any money. Like, I asked that in the first donation just because I was frustrated at the time. It was 20 minutes after I was drained. Um, but yeah, this was mainly to clear up the air. I'm 14 and my D guy was drained because I don't know how, like I'm trying to figure it out still. I think I clicked on a link and I maybe connected it to something, but it sucks. I shouldn't send it to my ledger it's sitting right here. I should have sent it there. But now I know right in the future what to do with assets and there's a lot to be taken away from this experience, but um, it doesn't help when a community is on my ass telling me I'm not 14, telling me sucks to suck, change your PFP, all this hate's unnecessary in my opinion. And I'd prefer if you guys didn't hate, but it supported the journey, not money wise, just maybe like, I don't know, just liking something, following. I'm just trying to make a comeback and stay positive, turn a bad situation into a positive one. So I think the goal here is going to be to turn around, 
and make a comeback. So this is my video uh, to clarify some questions. Let me get know if you guys have any more. I'm going to get my space in a sec. So yeah, see you guys. Hmm. So anyhow, good information I mean, from the kid and uh, see how it goes.